the presence of the Lord is thick, as they would say. The kabod is heavy. The glory is like a curtain upon this house and this place. Ah, bless you, Lord God. Bless you, my God. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech haolam asher Kiddishanu Be-mitzvotav Lahadlik Yam to Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us to be the light of this day. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Milek Ha-lam shehek yanu Vekhe-yamanu Vehigiyanu Lihizman Lihizman Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has granted us life, who sustains us, and has enabled us to come to this occasion. At this point, we could put the lights up, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. At this point, I'd like to just give you a brief understanding about Simchat Torah. Literally, it translates rejoicing with the Torah. Rejoicing with the Word of God. And it marks the end of a cycle that goes on all year. It begins on this day. And it ends on this day in the next Hebrew calendar. Now I think you know because of your affiliation with this church and understanding that Rosh Hashanah, the Hebrew New Year, was... September 20. And after that, into the days of awe, and then we entered into Sukkot, and that began last Shabbat, last Saturday. And we celebrated Sukkot, the first fruits. And we'll celebrate it again today as we come to a conclusion with it, with Simchat Torah. And we gathered together in this house, Monday through Friday, and we prayed. We prayed our assignment that God has given us for the Hezekiah blast, always remembering Sukkot and asking him to allow us, especially at this time, to harvest the blessings 
that have been sown into Jerusalem and Israel as of recent by this nation, the United States of America, one nation under God. And wherein Jerusalem was recognized and is recognized as the eternal capital of Israel. And we understand that Jerusalem is the polished apple of the Lord's eye. That's what his word says. So we said to the Lord, Father, we've sown into you. And we've sown many things. And yes, we've messed up a lot of stuff. But your word says that those who bless her shall be blessed. And those who curse her shall be cursed. Father, we've removed that curse from off this land. And as a nation, we have blessed her. So allow us to harvest that blessing. And Father, preserve this nation. Don't let us fall away from you. Help us to stop killing unborn children. Help us, Father, to honor and observe the sanctity of holy marriage in your image, both male and female. Not male and male, and not female and female. And allow us, Lord, to have a country that we're unrestricted to pray. And that we don't have a fear and intimidation to assemble and to worship and to sing praises. And I believe, and I pray you do as well, that you agree that God honors his word. And today we celebrate his word. So we agree in an assemblage, we agree in a declaration that, Lord, let it be done as unto your word. Bless this nation mightily now. Right now. And we ask him to cut through all the hypocrisy wherever it's coming from. Too much hypocrisy, too much deceit. And to allow the truth of the Lord to be heard. As uh, I was coming from my office and Walt was coming by, he uh, asked me if I heard the trumpet yesterday. I didn't know what he was talking about. I was at the Village Green yesterday along with Sonny and Leanne and some of you who came and my wife Laura Lee and we had a fairly prominent role in celebrating the Back to Blue. And uh, I was not aware of a trumpet blowing but then he captured it on his phone and he prayed it for me and if you listened very softly you heard this ethereal sound of a trumpet blowing in the heavenlies. And as he explained to me, people all over the world heard it. I said, well, what time was that? He said, 11 a.m. <laughs> 11 a.m. is 7 p.m. Jerusalem time yesterday, right when the celebration of Simchat Torah in Jerusalem was concluding in the diaspora, which is what we are. It's celebrated on the second day, and that's why we celebrate it today. The trumpet blew. The word of the Lord roared out of Zion. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion. Sound the alarm in God's holy mountain. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion. Sound the alarm. Wow. You see, the word of God isn't mere words, and it's, it's not a fable, and it's not a story, and it's not a history lesson. The word of God's alive. And we can miss the things of God if we're not alive. <laughs> but God is constantly crying out. And it brings me to Psalms 19 as I muse about this right now, that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament therein 
all that he is. The heavens declare the glory of God. So you, Simcha Torah is typically celebrated by taking out the Torah scrolls, and there's no rule about how many. If you're a wealthy congregation, you can have many of them. I know one that had 11, I think. I know also of a story of a Torah that was preserved through the Holocaust, dug in the ground and kept. And after the Holocaust, it was discovered the rabbi had buried it, wrapped it up to preserve it so that they would hold on to the culture and heritage of the love of the Word of God. Everybody in that temple was killed. But the survivors, the next generation, those who came, they relished the heritage of the Torah of God. Typically it's done with dancing and singing and rejoicing even as we have. And they carry them through the sanctuary and typically there's seven circles of dancing. And uh, the Hebrew word for that is hakafat. And what it means is you're dancing with, with it as you're going around. And typically it's seven to ten. Ten is a minion. Ten, and a minion is how many men should come together to have agreement in the Hebraic tradition. And I think I've shared with you in the past that one of my most delightful moments when I could be in Jerusalem at the time of Sukkot and especially celebrate Simcha Torah, which would have been yesterday morning, would be to go there early, very early, because if you get there late, you can't get to the wall. So I would like to go early and be one of the first few there. Make my way down to the wall and you begin to just celebrate and the sun would break out. Then they'd bring in the chief rabbi and then they'd bring in the elder rabbis. Some of them would have to be carried on chairs and they'd be brought to the wall and they'd begin to pray out what I just prayed to you in Hebrew. And the cantors would sing, and then we would break into minions, not necessarily anybody knowing anybody, but dancing the halakot. And it's a halal. And the actual words, when you break them down, they say, come, Lord. <laughs> come, Lord. It's a wondrous time. My greatest memory was with nine soldiers they needed one more, and they got me. Celebrating with these nine soldiers who took buses and whatever they could from their camps to be at the wall for Simcha Torah. A celebration day of the Word of God. So you dance with the scrolls, you make your minions. Some people take the scrolls out to the streets. It's very interesting especially in the Orthodox communities, because you'll see them out there dancing with the scrolls up in the air, and it's almost like a rite of passage. You'd see the stronger, younger guys holding the scroll to show that they could do it for a while and then pass it on to another one. And there would be a reading, and the reading would come out of starting in Deuteronomy, 3327. Let's just put that up and read it a moment. We'll start in 27 and read a portion of it. There would typically be three readings to conclude the cycle, beginning in the beginning of the year now, which starts and goes back to Genesis 1 and ends with this. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy before you and will say destroy. How many like that word? <laughs> Isn't it interesting that this is what you start with on the morning of Simcha Torah to conclude the whole year's reading 
of Torah in the temple. That Israel shall dwell in safety in the fountain of Jacob alone in the land of grain and new wine, his heavens shall also drop dew. That's why we celebrate Sukkot, the harvest. Because we're celebrating that the grain and the new wine in the heavens shall drop dew to nourish and to bring forth provision and bounty and abundance for the whole year. And then the scripture says, Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of your help and the sword of your majesty. Your enemies shall submit to you, and you shall tread down their high places. We speak that this morning as a declaration for the places of wickedness and the places of darkness that are established in the high places in our own nation, in our own city, in our own families, in our own communities. And the promise of the Lord says as we celebrate and honor Him in this, that we shall tread down their high places. Does that sound familiar to some of the new covenant gospel that you know? Hmm? Put them under your feet and tread them down under the promise of God. And then the word says, verse 30, 34.1, I'm sorry. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have caused you to see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. The Lord let him see the vision of the promise that he had labored and worked so hard for. But he was not permitted to cross over because God wanted to pass it on to the next generation and for many other reasons. But you have the vision. It's been written on tablets plainly so that we can run after it. And the vision is the kingdom come here on earth, even as it is in heaven. And the vision is that Jesus is coming back. And the vision is that he's making us stronger. And the rise and shine that there is gross darkness all over the earth, but not to worry, because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you and upon me. We have the vision. We're living the vision. We're part of it. And the Lord isn't separating us and keeping us from it. So they would read through. They would conclude in Deuteronomy 34. And then they would go to the first, to the book of Genesis. And they would begin to read about creation. And they would begin to celebrate the God as the creator. And as they were celebrating they would bless God for each day and bless him for the Sabbath, the seventh day rest. And bless him that he did all the work so that we might rest on the seventh day and enjoy the work of his hands. The way that we together greet on Simcha Torah is Hag Samach. You could say it, Hag Samach. And what it means is happy holiday, happy Torah day. Now, after the prayers, the Torahs would be taken out. They would read Genesis 1. Sometimes they would read Numbers 29. We won't do that, 35. And then they would take a Talit, similar to this. And they would place this talit, our children are all downstairs. I think I see one in the back. Some, will you come up? A couple children, come on up. If there's any more children left in here, would they come up? Don't go get them, but it's all right if there's a couple here. There they are. Yeah, come on up. Come up here. Come on. 
He's saying, how come me? <laughs> yeah, mama, you better come with them. You're short enough. You'll pass. Thank you. And they would take this talit, just come right here and turn around and face there. Right in a row. Right, no, right next to each other. There you go. And they would place it over the heads of the children. And it's something we should learn well from. And this is what they do. They spread it over the heads of the children. And after the prayers, then someone in the house presents Jacob's blessing. May the angel who redeemed me from all harm bless the children. And may they be called by my name and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac. And may they multiply abundantly like fish in the midst of the land. We bless the children, Father, in this house. We bless the children of everybody that's in this house, no matter how old they are. We thank you, Father, for deliverance. We thank you, Father, for abundance. We thank you that they walk with you and know the fathers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even Jesus Christ. Bless all the children, Father, in the seed of the seed forevermore. Keep them in thy name. Amen. Thank you. You guys did a great job. Yes. So then the Torah is concluded. And then everyone gets to their feet. And they cry out, Hazak, Hazak, Venit, Hazek. Can you say that? Say it slowly. Hazak, Hazak, Venit, Hazek. It says, be strong, be strong, and let us strengthen one another. Hmm. Be strong, be strong, and let us strengthen one another. Yes. So, my prayer, our prayer, is that all would come to know Jesus Christ. Our prayer, all of our prayers, and it's the heart of the Lord, is that none should perish. A prayer of my passion that actually was the one that the Lord answered and showed me that he was the Messiah, that he was Yeshua, that he was the God that I'd been seeking. That prayer was, Father, let me help lead my people back to you. We're lost. So I cry out that same prayer every day, Father, Open the eyes, open the hearts, open the ears of my people that they might know you. Even as I cry out for others. Christ is all through the scriptures, John 1, 1, and we'll be closing with these scriptures. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If only religious people would accept the word of God. If only those who work so hard to try to please God or to know God or to find their way somewhere else could accept and understand that Jesus Christ is the word. The word is the way. Exodus 18 verse 20. Teach them the statutes and the laws, which is Torah. And make known to them the way in which they are to walk and the work that they are to do. Psalm 119, verse 142. Your righteousness is everlasting and your law is true. Proverbs 13, 14. The teaching of Torah of the wise is a fountain of life, taking a person from the snares of death. 
John 14, 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except from me. John 10, 30. We know that he's talking about himself and the Father. I and the Father are one. That's why I know when it says that Moses communed on the mountain and received the word from the Lord that it was God the Father and God the Son because they're one. And they released the word upon the earth through Moses. What an awesome experience that must have been, huh? Can you imagine it? It says that he neither ate nor drank any water for 40 days. I think if you're in the presence of God, you're not too worried about eating and drinking. He was so energized and so powered that when he came down, he was glowing red. He looked nuclear and radioactive. So much that they couldn't look upon him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Today we look upon him in faith, it says. In Corinthians, as looking into a mirror, we see him face to face, even in the image of his glory. So in faith, you should be glowing. If not outwardly, inwardly. So, we've celebrated. And so, we've recognized. Tonight, in various times of today and last night, Jews all over the world are taking a time to celebrate Torah, the Word of God. And when they come into the temple on Shabbat, this next one coming, they will continue to read in the book of Genesis. And they will read portions divided into the weeks until the next Hebrew year. So that when it comes to this time again next year, they will conclude with Deuteronomy 34. But they do with an eager heart that every time they go through this process, they will receive more revelation. My prayer is that in this process, they will receive his revelation. And many believe, I would like to believe it, I can't say it is, but I would like to believe that Yeshua HaMashiach will return at this time with Sukkot in the first fruits of the harvest. Because the Hallel that's done as they dance in Jerusalem is come, Lord, come. And what are the last words that we're taught? Come quickly, Lord Jesus. You see where it comes from? You tie it together? This wasn't new, the revelation that John got. He was emphasizing the faith of the revelation he got for his people. Come quickly, Lord. Come as the God of the harvest. Come as the first fruit of the resurrected. Come as the long promised one. Come. Messiah, come. Lord, In some ways, Father, we can relate to what David said when he said people are like the grass. They wither through time and they blow away. Father, I can understand that in his moment, he was wondering what eternity was all about. And I understand, Lord, that you took Moses to see the vision of the promised land. But you didn't let him go there. Instead, you took him home. 
But here we are, Father. We see. We see. We believe. We understand that we have life and life eternal in you. How blessed we are. What a special people we are. To be alive forevermore and to be alive in this time. To some, Father, it's a dreadful time to us. Even in the wonderment and in the mysteries, it's exciting. You've made us, Lord, to have an expiration date of life here on this earth. My prayer for all of us, for myself, is that, Lord, as you did with Moses, you said that he stayed strong, that he was good until the end of his days at 120 years. Keep us strong, Lord. Keep us good. Keep our hope alive. Let our faith grow. Let the power of God through your Holy Spirit grow stronger and stronger in us. Let us be instruments for you, O Lord. Let us be good stewards. Let us be ministers in the fire of God. Let us be a voice in the wilderness. Let us be a light in the darkness. Thank you, Father. Let this be a good year, Lord. Let this be a year, Father, that we can shout the victories of God. We're the first ones to confess to you, Father. We're a little battle-weary. I know I am. We're a little tired. But we're not giving up. We're running the race. We're continuing on. We cry out to you again, Father. The children have been brought to birth. But we need strength. Be our strength this hour, this day, this season, this time. Do it, Lord. And Father, remember, remember, O oh God, God of Israel, the ancient of days, remember the blessings of the God of Israel upon those who bless them. Pour them out, Father. Let the windows in heaven open up. Flood us, Father, with the wonderment of your awesome glory and power, your peace, your love, your joy. Move, O oh Lord. Move. We do pray in the name that Yeshua HaMashiach told us to pray in, in agreement, even the name of Jesus, and in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.